in the morning. This is the most auspicious day in our Vedic calendar. And sometimes we wonder, wow, there are so many wonderful days in our Vedic calendar. And we have Sri Krishna Janmashtami, Gaur Purnima, Narsimha Chaturdasi, Govardhan Puja. So many wonderful days. So how we can understand this Lord Nityananda Tayodasi to be so important and most important for all of us as we uh, pursue the path of devotional service. So we'll read today from Chaitanya Charitamrita and also a little bit from Chaitanya Bhagavat 
to hope to understand how this in fact is, uh, how this is in reality a fact. And my hope is that in my own heart, I will establish it as a firm fact that this is the most auspicious day in our calendar, this appearance day of Lord Nityananda. And we'll see how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself personally instructed all the devotees on the glorious position of Lord Nityananda and the extreme importance uh, of worshipping Lord Nityananda. If anybody wants to have any hope of making progress in devotional service. So we we'll see and read and hear um, from past times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and also from some of our other great Acharyas. It is by the inconceivable and unlimited mercy of Shua Prabhupada um, that we have even come to know Lord Nityananda. Um, Shua Prabhupada um, endeavored tirelessly to bring Gornitai to the entire world. And he was so confident in the unlimited mercy that he ad advised all of us to bring Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu into all of our homes as deities. He said, even if you're not going to worship them and just keep them as dolls in a bookcase, there is no loss but great benefit. So by the mercy of Shiva Prabhupada, we have come to understand a little bit about the glorious uh, mercy of, of Lord Nityananda. And we know this is our festival season of the Gorda Bhakta Vrindas. We have you know, Advaita Acharya's appearance day last week, Lord Nityananda's appearance day today, and of course in a little over a month's time, uh, Gaur Purnima. So and tomorrow is the appearance day of Narutam Das Thakur and so many other wonderful personalities. So this is a very festive season. So in Chaitanya Chaitamrita Adi Lila, Chapter 5, Krishna Skaviraj Goswami has uh, uh, presented a chapter called The Glories of Lord Nityananda Balaram. And in the beginning of this chapter, he is establishing the position of Lord Balaram. In, in uh, verse 4, he says, Sarva Bhattari Krishna Swayam Bhagavan Tanara Daitya Deha Shik Balaram. Translation The Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, Krishna, is the fountainhead of all incarnations. Lord Balaram is a second body. In purport, by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shiva Prabhupada. Shiva Prabhupada, Lord Shri Krishna, the Absolute Personality of Godhead, is a primeval Lord, the original form of Godhead, and his first expansion is Shri Balaram. The Personality of Godhead can expand himself in innumerable forms. The forms that have unlimited potency are called Shramsha, and the forms that have limited potency, the living entities, are called Bibhinamsha. So we'll read text 5, uh, just a translation in purport. These two are one and the same identity. They differ only in form. Lord Balaram is the first bodily expansion of Krishna, and he assists in Lord Krishna's transcendental pastimes. Purport. Balaram is a Swamsha expansion of the Lord, and therefore there is no difference in potency between Krishna and Balaram. The only difference is their bodily structure. As the first expansion of Godhead, Balaram is the chief deity amongst the first quadruple forms. And he is the foremost assistant of Sri Krishna in transcendental activities. Now text 6 sums it all up and brings these two verses together. He says, the, That original Lord Krishna appeared in Navadvi as Lord Chaitanya, and Balaram appeared with him as Lord Nityananda. And then he gives us a wonderful blessing. May Sri Nityananda Ram be the object of my constant remembrance. Sankarshan, Sheshanag, and Vishnus, who lie in the Karana Ocean, Garba Ocean, and Ocean of Milk, are his plenary portions and the portions of his plenary portions. Om Jnana Timidandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurum Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam 
स्थापित भूतले स्वयं कदाम दधाती स्वापदातिक वंदेम श्री गुरो श्रीयुत पदकमल श्री गुरोन्वैष्णवांश श्री रूपं सागजात सहगना रघुनाता तम तम सजीव साइत सवदूत परीरन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्ण पदन ललिता श्री विशाखाता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तत्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विश्वानुस्त देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचकल्पिंधु मे वच पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासवी गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सो कृष्ण कृष्णाज गोस्वामी इज एस्टैब्लिश in those verses we read that lord balaram is the is also the supreme personality of godhead he is the first expansion from lord krishna and there is no difference between krishna and balaram but for their bodily structure as shri prabhupada explained in the purport and that same lord balaram has appeared in navadvip as lord nitin So on our altar we have Lord Balaram represented twice on our altar, um, and in Chaitanya Bhagwat, uh, Rindavan Das Thakur has written extensively about the glories of Lord Nityananda. Um, you can see his deep attachment to Lord Nityananda, and many of his pastimes he has um, discussed in great detail. It was Lord Nityananda himself who was the inspiration to both Vrindavan Das Thakur and Krishna Kaviraj Goswami to present these um, biographies um, on, on the most uh, wonderful passages of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so we are very indebted to uh, Lord Nityananda for bringing this. So I wanted to read a verse. Um, we'll read a couple of verses from Chaitanya Bhagavat. Uh, this is from Madhya Khan, uh, chapter twelve. In here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is 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 speaking, and he is glorifying uh, the position of Lord Nityananda. We know that Krishna comes himself as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood of a devotee. and chaitanya mahaprabhu's mission is one and that is to give everyone the highest and most uh ultimate perfection of life and that is awakening our krishna prema and giving us access to the eternal spiritual world in shri goloka vrindavan and chaitanya mahaprabhu gave uh the process uh by his own example by showing us when he comes uh himself as krishna in his krishna leela he gave the instructions through his bhagavad gita and other teachings of how to practice devotional service but as chaitanya mahaprabhu he comes and shows us exactly step by step how to practice devotional service in achieve this topmost perfection of life and thus he is called mahabadanaya most merciful because he is trying to give all of us conditioned souls an opportunity to achieve this wonderful perfection of life so everything chaitanya mahaprabhu did was a potent instruction for us and everything that he spoke and performed 
is something that we can um, learn from and follow. And so in guiding the associates uh, in Navadvi, Jaitanya Mahaprabhu performed a, a very uh, sweet pastime. Um, we'll discuss that pastime in a moment. Um, but this is Jaitanya Mahaprabhu speaking now. And, he, and this is the 26th verse of the 12th chapter. And we'll read the verse and, uh, and, and, and most, some of the purport. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Simply by the mercy of Nityananda, one attains devotional service of Vishnu. Know it for certain that Nityananda is the full potency of Krishna. Purport. Mahaprabhu said, quote, You should know Sri Nityananda Prabhu as the complete potency of Lord Krishna. He is the topmost among the servants of Krishna. Only by his mercy can one achieve devotion to Vishnu. He is the form of Vishnu presiding over the Sandini potency. Although he is Lord Vishnu himself, he nevertheless serves the Supreme Vishnu. He serves the origin of all Vishnu tattvas. Only by his mercy is the living entity's propensity for worshipping Hari awakened. In his form as the younger sister of Radharani, Sri Nityananda Prabhu nourishes conjugal mellows. This is why Nartam Das Thakur has said, Hena Nitai Vina Bhai Radha Krishna Pai Tena Dita Hakari Dara Nitai Ara Pai. Unless one takes shelter under the shade of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, it will be very difficult for him to approach Radha Krishna. If one actually wants to enter into the dancing party of Radha Krishna, he must firmly catch the catch hold of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. As the Supreme Jagat Guru, Sri Nityananda Prabhu alone is the origin of Guru Tattva. In regards to the devotee Jagat Guru, the spiritual master is an incarnation of Sri Nityananda, who is a manifestation of Sri Chaitanya. The spiritual master is the most dear to Lord Krishna, because like Lord Nityananda, he is also a manifestation of Sri Chaitanya. And he is renowned to be as good as Nityananda. So we can see here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is establishing very clearly that simply by the mercy of Nityananda, one can obtain devotional service of Vishnu. So when we say, this is the most important day in our Vedic calendar, in order to awaken this uh, love for Krishna, this attachment to devotional service, one must obtain the mercy of Lord Nityananda. In the very wonderful bhajan uh, that Sri Narutam Das Thakur has, has given this Nitai Pada Kamala, this uh, you know, shining moons, which is very soothing to all of us, the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. In that second stanza, he says, unless one takes shelter under the shade of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, it will be very difficult for him to approach Radha Krishna. So we see that to approach um, Shushi Radha Kunj Bihari, we can only approach through Lord Nityananda. And thus we understand how uh, important Lord Nityananda is in our process of devotional service. So, as we read in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Lord Nityananda is Lord Balaram himself. And Lord Balaram, we know, is the Guru Tattva, the source of all the Gurus. Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita establishes the prime importance of the spiritual master in our process of devotional service. He says one must approach the spiritual master, a bona fide spiritual master, coming in Parampara and render service unto him and inquire from him submissively. So Krishna, in this fourth chapter entitled Transcendental Knowledge, has said, to acquire this knowledge of how to perform devotional service, one must approach a guru. And all gurus, as we read in this purport, are expansions from this guru tattva, Lord Balaram, Lord Nityananda. So, when we know um, the, the meaning of Balaram, 
It is the giver of this spiritual strength. Spiritual journey is not so easy. Uh, we are always faced with so many obstacles. But the giver of strength in the spiritual process is Lord Nityananda, who gives us the, uh, the mercy and ability to practice devotional service. Even the meaning, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, explains the meaning of Lord Nityananda's name. It is Nitya, eternal Ananda, bliss, full of eternal bliss. We are all looking for eternal bliss. Nobody is looking for temporary bliss. We want unending happiness. And that begins at the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. So his importance in our spiritual journey is impossible to fully characterize. Um, we see um, in, in this purport here that Lord Nityananda himself is constantly serving Lord Krishna. He is showing us by his own example how to please the Supreme Lord and serving in all different mellows. He serves in the mood of neutrality, expanding himself into all the paraphernalia that are used to worship Krishna. That is an expansion of Lord Balram, Lord Nityananda. And thus we treat and handle with great care and attention all the paraphernalia to worship Krishna. He renders service as a servant in this dasyaras. As a friend, they enjoy so many pastimes. Lord Nityananda and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enjoyed so many pastimes, many of which are quite comical and amusing and very pleasing to the heart. They shared pastimes as you know, the elderly brother was Vatsalya Rasa, taking care of Lord uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And also in the conjugal Rasa, as uh, we read here, as the younger sister of Radharani, as Ananda Manjari, uh, Lord Balram is an expansion to serve. So in all modes, Lord Nityananda is serving Krishna and teaching us the process of devotional service. So we see that in order to obtain the pastimes of Radha Krishna, one must approach Lord Nityananda. And we know that the pastimes in Goloka Vrindavan, they are the most intensified aspect of devotional service. The attachment of the devotees of Vrindavan is unmatched anywhere else in all of creation. It is where this love and devotional service is most intense. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us the process by which we can all attain that very important position. And he is establishing in this verse we read that simply by the mercy of Lord Nityananda, one obtains devotional service. We must go through Lord Nityananda. And it is said that Lord Nityananda is actually, he is the personification of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's love. And Lord Nityananda holds the key to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's heart. So if we want to access Mahavadana as most merciful Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we must approach Lord Nityananda. And we'll see, we'll discuss a few other personalities who have shown us by their own example how they did the exact same. But first let's discuss a little bit about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's um, glorification of Lord Nityananda. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaching us across the devotional service, he establishes the position of Lord Nityananda in many of his pastimes. In the first meeting between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda, we know that Lord Nityananda appeared some 12 years before the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the town of Ekachakra, uh, in the home of Adai Pandit in Padmavati. And Lord Nityananda performed many sweet, sweet pastimes in his childhood, particularly famous for you know, uh, performing all of the different uh, 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 dramas in Krishna Leela, in Ramayana, and other pastimes. But at the age of 12, after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in Navadvip, by his transcendental desire, uh, he left his home um, to render service to a traveling sannyasi. 
and there he traveled the world, uh, traveled the world, traveled all of India to all the holy places, and then settled in Vrindavan. Uh, and for the next 20 years, was immersed in an ecstatic love of Krishna. And he was waiting for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to begin his Sankirtana movement. So the first 20 years of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes in Navadvip, uh, Lord Nityananda was just waiting in Vrindavan, waiting for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to call him to begin uh, this most potent section of his pastimes. So as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was beginning to prepare for his, uh, to launch the Sankirtana movement far and wide, he then called for Lord Nityananda to come. And so Lord Nityananda arrived in Navadvip. And, you know, this pastime again is described very elaborately in, 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 the, in um, Chaitanya Bhagavat. And when he arrived, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told the associates, his associates that, you know, a great personality has come. And so he sent out Haridas Thakur and Srivas Thakur and said, go and find this great personality. And so they searched. Navadvip is not such a big town, so it shouldn't take very long to <laughs> cover all the areas and find out. And of course, you know, chatter starts when some great person comes, right? Uh, people start discussing. So it should not have taken very long. But nine hours they searched, and they came back in the evening. Said, Didn't see anything. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Yeah, this Lord Nityananda, he has. Uh, he performs many tricks. He is hiding somewhere. Let us go. I'll show you where you can find him. And they went to the house of Nandanacharya. But Vrindavan Das Thakur comments that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's finding Lord Nityananda is very important. Uh, and there's a very important instruction there. That the pastimes of Lord Nityananda knowing who is Lord Nityananda is actually very confidential. It is so important to put it as very, very confidential. That even the great Aridas Thakur and the associates could not find him. That Krishna himself, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, can bring us to the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. And so uh, the, the pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu finding him, we all know, Thakur comments that there is much meaning behind this, that it means that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is one who can reveal Lord Nityananda to all of us. And we see, you know, that by the mercy of Guru, we get the mercy of Krishna. And by the mercy of Krishna, we get the mercy of Guru. So like this, it is by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that we can actually obtain the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, Lord Nityananda is the key to obtaining the mercy and service of the Supreme Lord Krishna. So this first meeting uh, was very, very powerful. And in that meeting, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately wanted to establish in the minds and hearts of all of the associates, because they did not know who is Lord Nityananda. And they knew each other, they knew other persons, but they didn't know who is Lord Nityananda. So in the in initial moments of the interaction between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asks Srivast Thakur, please read some verses from Bhagavatam. Why? Because he wanted to show to all the associates how um, pure in devotion Lord Nityananda was, how elevated of a personality he was so that everybody would get the fortune of honoring and worshiping and serving Lord Nityananda. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he could have spoke how great Lord Nityananda was, but first he wanted to show. And so as, as Srivast Thakur is reading verses from Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Lord Nityananda goes into ecstasy, uncontrollable ecstasy. He is jumping high and falling on the ground in the are completely in shock, having not seen such ecstatic mood. And this is the measure of one's progress in devotional service. You know, how the heart 
transforms upon hearing the pastimes, the qualities, the names, the forms of Krishna. That is the measure of one's progress. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very immediately established the supreme position of, Chaitanya, of Lord Nityananda. And after some further interactions, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, recites or um, makes a few important statements that I wanted to read. Uh, this is from chapter 4, uh, 37 to 43. Again, this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, uh, discussing uh, about uh, Lord Nityananda. He says, he is speaking to Lord Nityananda. I understand that you are the full power of Godhead. Only by worshipping you can a living entity attain devotional service to Krishna. You are able to purify the 14 worlds. Your confidential characteristics are inconceivable and unfathomable. Who is qualified to recognize you for you are the personified wealth of loving devotion to Lord Krishna. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaking about. If a person associates with you even for a moment, he will be delivered even if he has committed millions of sinful activities. I have understood that Krishna will deliver me because he has given me your association. Out of great fortune I have seen your lotus feet. Just by worshipping you, I will achieve the wealth of love for Krishna. Lord Garanga was fully absorbed as he incessantly offered prayers to him. Do we need any more evidence? <laughs> this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his office. Such amazing verses. If a person associates with you for even a moment, one can achieve perfection. And by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, we have Gorni Thai right in front of us. He personally installed these deities on his last visit to Detroit. And as we know, it is the last deities that Srila Prabhupada personally installed in the whole world. And somehow we are fortunate to have the opportunity to have darshan of his lotus feet. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is establishing that it is of most importance. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu state, makes many other verses uh, following these uh, six verses uh, about the glories of uh, Lord Nityananda. But in the interest of time, we'll, we'll continue. Um, in, in the verse we read previously, 26, um, <laughs> very sweet pastime. Again, all of these pastimes are to instruct us on the supreme importance of Lord Nityananda in our process of devotional service. So Lord Nityananda would perform many, you know, uh, amusing pastimes, sometimes bewildering pastimes. Um, you know, his, we, we sometimes refer to Lord Nityananda as, as, as Avadut. But, you know, he is not mad. We are all mad conditioned by our material desires and material longings. We are the ones who have gone mad, not understanding the purpose of life. So sometimes in observing uh, the activities of Lord Nityananda, through our conditioned lens, we become bewildered to understand how this is possible. But once Lord Nityananda, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked for the coping, of Lord Nityananda. And Lord Nityananda submitted and gave his kopin to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately began to tear it into small, small pieces. And he gave it to each of the associates. And he said, what do you do with this kopin? You worship it. They put it in their head. And he encouraged them, after, you go home and you worship this. Why? Because this is non-different from Lord Nityananda, the worshipable personality. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is establishing, when we say the word absolute truth, 
There is no difference between Krishna and his names, in his forms, his paraphernalia, his pastimes, his qualities. They are all absolute. And this piece of kopin was the means by which the associates could daily worship Lord Nityananda. And so we sometimes, you know, apply our conditional thinking, you know, kopin, it's an undergarment, maybe this, that. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is reminding us that everything that Lord Nityananda does and has is absolute and perfect and worshipable. Lord uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, um, when uh, teaching the associates about Vyas Puja, he anointed Lord Nityananda to be the primary uh, recipient and instructor and teacher of this important. So repeatedly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, established for all of us um, who Lord Nityananda is in our process of devotional service. He later in this chapter uh, begins to wash Lord Nityananda's feet and tells all the associates, you drink this water if you really want to make progress in devotional service. So again and again, um, we see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who came to teach us the process of devotional service, establishing Lord Nityananda as the most important worshipable personality for all of us who have any hope to awaken Krishna Prima and go back home, back to God. And our, um, you know, we see in the, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, you know, so many uh, examples of great personalities who follow this instruction. You know, Raghunath Das Goswami, when he wanted to have so eagerly association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so desperately from childhood, wanting to be united with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how he got to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? First, by approaching Lord Nityananda. By serving Lord Nityananda and all of his associates at Paniyatma. By obtaining the mercy of Lord Nityananda, he then was able to fulfill his strong desire to go be in association with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Rupan Sanatana Goswami, when they meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Ramkiya. This was discussed again in the very beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita. They were so anxious to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They were exchanging letters pre up to this point, and they were so eager to give up their worldly duties and join Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his mission. And sometimes in eagerness, what do we do? We go straight to where we want to go. Sometimes we don't, you know, we even lose sight of what we should do, how we should go. We might barge into a room if we're very anxious to go. But Rupa Sanatana Goswami, they understood. To approach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we must first offer our obeisances and approach Lord Nityananda. So before going to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, both Rupa Sanatana Goswami, they approached Lord Nityananda and offered their obeisances to Lord Nityananda. Then they went to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and a very, very sweet pastime takes place. Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami in, in, in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita talks about how one who is respectful to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu but even neutral to Lord Nityananda is the greatest fool. And he was chastising his brother who was carrying such consciousness. Very, you know, enamored and, and loving to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But somewhat dismissive of Lord Nityananda. And he chastised him severely and said, this is half-hen logic. And this half-hen logic is very interesting. You know, one farmer had a hen and this hen had this amazing ability to produce golden eggs. So this farmer was very wealthy. And we know when you have wealth, it's never satisfied. There's always greed. 
So he is thinking that, you know, I'm getting these golden eggs from the backside of this hen. But unfortunately, I have to put some foods into the mouth of the hen. It would be great if I could just, you know, have the backside and that. So he decided to cut the hen in half and he was going to keep the backside. He said, as foolish as that is, it is foolish to think that one can worship and respect Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and not have the same or even more adoration for Lord Nityananda. So, um, Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami establishes also for us um, the great importance. And of course, Narutam Das Thakur has said in his verse we read, one cannot approach Radha Krishna without the mercy of Lord Nityananda. So just in a few minutes, we'll discuss a few other personalities who have established the greatness of Lord Nityananda. And again, as I opened in this class, my only hope from this discussion is for myself to establish as an irrevocable fact that Lord Nityananda's appearance day is most glorious and most important for us in our process of devotional service. So Lord Nityananda, when he reached Navadvi, as I mentioned, he appeared 12 years before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he arrived in Navadri 20 years into Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. So how old is he? 32 years at least on this planet. But his mood was that of a young coward boy. He had a very sweet mood and he was a young coward boy and he was staying with Shivas Thakur and his consort Mohini. And in this, um, Lord Nityananda would perform very, very sweet pastimes, very confidential pastimes. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Mahini, you don't tell anybody what Lord Nityananda is doing because uh, they are bewildering to the ignorant, uh, foolish. Uh, but in many really loving pastimes, you know, Chaitanya, uh, Lord Nityananda would eat directly from the hands of Malini. He would not eat on his own. You know, as a small child, uh, out of this, you know, again, affectionate love, he was thinking of Malini Devi as one of the elderly gopis in, in Vraja. And so he would keep this mood. So one day, uh, Malini Devi came to understand who this Lord Nityananda is. You know, she's seeing, of course, you know, this, you know, very, you know, uh, interesting pastimes. But one day a crow came and with his beak picked up a copper pot that was full of ghee and flew away with the pot in its beak. And this pot was to be used by Shiva's Thakur for worship. And so she became very fearful that without this pot of ghee, you know, Shiva's Thakur's worship would be disturbed and, you know, she'd be, he'd be very angry and upset. And so she was lamenting and crying and crying, what to do, what to do. And Lord Nityananda, you know, approached her, what is the source of your lamentation? Why are you so upset? And she explained that this crow had come and uh, taken the ghee. The crow came back after putting the pot somewhere. So, no problem. Lord Nityananda just looks at the crow and uh, Vindavan Das Thakur comments that um, you know, Krishna is in the heart of every living entity. And so from within, um, Lord Nityananda communicated to the crow, you better go get that pot, uh, bring that pot of ghee back, this copper pot. <laughs> and so the crow immediately flew away. Now, Mahayadev is perplexed. Did the crow fly away and is not going to come back? Or what happened? So still her anxiety was there. And of course, Lord Nityananda is keeping her in suspense. Just you know, a few moments later, the crow came back with this pot, this beak uh, in its beak, and put the pot just in front of Mahayadev. And she's like, oh. And she's looking at Lord Nityananda. And then she's like astonished. For a moment. And then she realizes and understands who is Lord Nityananda. She says, what is so astonishing about this crow under your direction bringing back this pot of ghee? You, to give dakshina to your guru, 
went and received his uh, deceased son from Yamaraj. If you could bring back, and of course he's, she's speaking of in the past time of Krishna Malaram in the, in the Ashrama Sandipani Muni. She says, what is so significant about this pot of uh, ghee coming back? You are holding as Ananta Shish all of the universes on your hood and it doesn't even carry the weight of a dust piece of dust on my own head. So what is so great about that? You as Lakshman have destroyed half of Ravan's army. And like this she goes on and on uh, discussing all the glorious pastimes in recognition of who Lord Nityananda is um, and then celebrating the retrieval of this pot of copper. So as Malini Devi you know, glorifies Lord and one final um, establishment of who uh, Lord Nityananda is, um, it was sweet pastime with um, Sachimata. So Lord Nityananda would often go to Sachimata's house when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there and would enjoy many, many pastimes. And once uh, Chaitanya Ma uh, Lord Nityananda came uh, in a very interesting way, we won't discuss, but he came and um, then Sachimata uh, said, you know, you please take some sweets. So she puts five sun dishes in front of Chait uh, Lord Nityananda. And so Lord Nityananda eats the first sun dish and then takes the other four and he throws them in the room. Now we know if you have a sun dish and you throw it, what is going to happen to it? It's going to break apart. So Satyamata is saying this, says, Lord Nityananda, what have you done? What am I going to feed you now? I know what happens if we don't feed, but what am I going to feed? All my sweets, and now you have thrown them. So she became agitated. They're right there. Satyamata went, and she saw that all the sun dishes were intact. They are fully intact. And so she picked them up and kind of dusted them off and left the room. Few minutes later, she comes back and she says, "What are you doing?" And Lord Nityananda is eating those four sun dishes. Like, what? How are you doing? Well, you were upset that I threw the sun dishes, so now I don't want you to be upset with me, Mother Sachi. So I am eating these sun dishes, and she is thinking, "Oh, this is the mystical power of the supreme personality of Godhead." And she goes on to glorify Lord Nityananda. In his position. So Lord Nityananda would sometimes perform these, you know, very interesting pastimes, uh, but for the uh, purpose of uh, teaching all of us. And so we see um, in so many different of these experiences uh, the great importance of Lord Nityananda in our process of devotional service. So we pray um, and express our gratitude to Srila Prabhupada for introducing us to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda uh, through the presentation of Chaitanya Charitamrita, through the establishment of Gauranita deities all over the world. And we can then relish the instruction Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself has given us in how one must worship Lord Nityananda in order to have any hope for progress in devotion. And by just a moment of worship of Lord Nityananda, one can overcome millions and millions of sins. And as our other acharyas and great personalities, Rupan Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Narutam Das Das, Sachi, Malini, they have all established for us very clearly who Lord Nityananda is and must be the object of our pray today on this appearance day of Lord Nityananda that we can achieve his mercy so that we may then achieve the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and thus awaken this dormant love of God within all of us and achieve perfection of life. Thank you very much. Lord Nityananda Ram most glorious, most auspicious appearance day of Lord Nityananda. Comments? Anything to correct, clarify? Anything you can add?
many more minutes you have? As much as you will offer us. If you can please read the verses of Lord Nityananda and Chaitanya. Nityananda in the beginning. In the beginning, yes. This is the, the invocation of Munglachan, the, the seed verses that Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami is establishing in the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita. So we'll read the, the verses. Verse 1 I offer my respectful obeisances unto the spiritual master, the devotees of the Lord, the Lord's incarnations, his plenary portions, his energies, and the primeval Lord himself, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, who are like the sun and moon. They have arisen simultaneously on the horizon of Goda to dissipate the darkness of ignorance and thus wonderfully bestow benedictions upon all. What the Upanishads describe as the impersonal Brahman is but the effulgence of his body, and the Lord known as a Supersoul is but his localized plenary portion. Lord Chaitanya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna himself full with six opulences. He is the absolute truth, and no other truth is greater than or equal to Him. May the Supreme Lord, who is known as the son of Srimati Sachi Devi, be transcendently situated in the innermost chambers of your heart, resplendent with the radiance of molten gold. He has appeared in the age of Kali by His causeless mercy to bestow what no incarnation has ever offered before the most sublime and radiant mellow of devotional service, the mellow of conjugal love. The loving affairs of Shishi, Radha, and Krishna are transcendental manifestations of the Lord's internal pleasure-giving potency. Although Radha and Krishna are one in their identity, they separated themselves eternally. Now these two transcendental identities have again united in the form of Sri Krishna Chaitanya. I bow down to him, who has manifested himself with the sentiment and complexion of Srimati Radharani, although he is Krishna himself. Desiring to understand the glory of Radharani's love, the wonderful qualities in him that she alone relishes through her love, and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love, the Supreme Lord Hari, richly endowed with her emotions, appeared from the room of Srimati Sachi Devi as the moon appeared from the ocean. May Sri Nityananda Ram be the object of my constant remembrance. Sankarshana, Sesha Naga, and the Vishnus who lie on the Karna Ocean, Garba Ocean, and Ocean of Milk are his plenary portions and portions of his plenary portions. I surrender unto the lotus feet of Sri Nityananda Ram, who is known as Sankarshana, in the midst of Chaturvya, consisting of Vasudev, Sankarshana, Pradumna, and Anuruddha. And he possesses full opulence and resides in Vaikuntha Loka far beyond the material creation. I offer my full obeisances unto the feet of Sri Nityananda Ram, whose partial representation, called Karanakshai Vishnu, lying on the Karana Ocean, is the original Purusha, the master of illusory energy and the shelter of all universes. I offer my full obeisances unto the feet of Sri Nityananda Ram, a partial part of whom is Garbhodakshaya Vishnu. From the navel of Garbhodakshaya Vishnu spouts the lotus uh, that is the birthplace of Brahma, the engineer of the universe. The stem of that lotus is a resting place of the multitude of planets. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the feet of Sri Nityananda Ram, whose secondary part is the Vishnu lying in the ocean of milk, that Shirodakshaya Vishnu is the super soul of all living entities and the maintainer of all the universes. Sheshanag is further subpart. Lord Advaita Charya is the incarnation of Mahavishnu, whose main function is to create the cosmic world through the actions of Maya. Because he is non-different from Hari, the Supreme Lord, he is called Advaita. And because he propagates the cult of devotion, he is called Acharya. He is the Lord and the incarnation of the Lord's devotee. Therefore, I take shelter of him. I offer my obeisances unto the Supreme Lord Krishna, who is the non-different form, who is non-different from his features as a devotee, devotional incarnation, devotional manifestation, 
pure devotee in devotional energy. Glory to the all-merciful Radha Madana Mohana. I am lame and ill-advised. They are my directors, and their lotus feet are everything to me. In the temple of, of jewels or Vrindavan, underneath the desired tree, Shishi Radha Govinda, served by their most confidential associates, sit upon an effulgent throne. I offer my humble obeisances unto them. Srila, Shishi Srila Gopinath, the originate, who originated a transcendental mellow of the Rasa dance, stands on the shore of Vam, Vamshivata and attracts the attention of the cowherd damsels. With the sound of his celebrated flute, may they all confer upon us their benediction. Glory to Sri Chaitanya and Nityananda. Glory to Advaita Acharya and all glories to the devotees of Sri Gora, Lord Chaitanya. Two more. Two more. Oh, 19. These three devotees of Vrindavan, Madana Mohana, Govinda, and Gopinath, have absorbed the heart and soul of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Followers of Lord Chaitanya, I worship their feet, their lotus feet, for they are the lords of my heart. In the beginning of this narration, simply by remembering the spiritual master, the devotees of the Lord, and the personality of Godhead, I invoked, I have invoked their benedictions. Last but not least. Such remembrance destroys all difficulties and very easily enables one to fulfill his own desires. Yeah. Most, most potent verses, um, he always recites them very sweetly in, in the beginning of his classes. Anything else? Any other comments, discussion? Well, we are very fortunate to be in front of the deities on this auspicious day. And feel like we are in Ek Chakradam or Navjit Dham. Mm. Even able to participate in worship of them on the altar, wash their feet, massage their body, do a bishake and offer wonderful ingredients. Mm. Only by, by mercy of Guru and Srila Prabhupada we are able to do that. And we are extremely grateful. Sutta, Sutta Mahabhaga. It's our greatest fortune. I was just remembering five years ago, exactly today, I was in Ikka Chakradam on Nityananda Tayodasi. And I had this, so this morning being here felt non different, as you just said. <laughs> Truly. That was a spectacular experience being in Ikka Chakradam on Nityananda It was so sweet and so majestic and spiritually charged. Serving the deities here is non different than what it's been. So, as a personal experience, it's amazing. By the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki, Nanda Koti Vaishnavan.